Assume you have to distribute a large number of jobs over several identical servers and you want to minimize the waiting time of jobs, which is the time between a job's creation and its completion. It might be too costly to request the load of all servers before deciding which server to assign a new job to, or to route all communication through one server that distributes the jobs. A common approach is to assign jobs randomly to the servers, which already balances the load fairly well. Load balancing is often modeled as balls into bins game. Servers are modeled as bins and jobs are modeled as balls that are thrown into a random bin. Assume there are n bins and we throw m balls randomly into these bins. The question is, how fairly are these balls distributed or in other words, how big is the load difference between the least and highest loaded bin? In the influential work of Azar et Ali, it was shown that throwing the balls sequentially and allowing balls to pick the lesser loaded of two bins improves the load difference substantially. This effect is known as the power of two choices and applies to a range of settings. Our results apply to the parallel infinite setting where we create lambda n balls per round and throw all balls we have at once. Then, all non-empty bins delete one ball. We repeat these steps forever. In this setting, having two choices per ball loses some of its powers, since lesser loaded bins receive a lot of balls at once, resulting in a bin that is now higher loaded than some originally higher loaded second choices. We aim to fix this by introducing a very natural constraint to the bins. We assign all bins a finite capacity C. Each round, a bin accepts as many balls as possible and rejects the rest. All rejected balls are thrown again together with the newly generated balls. We assume that bins break ties by preferring older balls. This has no impact on neither the total number of balls in the system nor the average waiting time. We show that starting from an initially empty system, there exists an upper bound on the number of balls that we throw in any given round. This bound on the number of balls is proportional to the number of bins. With the arrival rate approaching 1, the first term increases and the second term becomes negligible. Then the number of balls is roughly inversely proportional to the capacity of the bins. However, for any fixed lambda, this approximation does not hold indefinitely. For increasing values of c, the second term dominates the first. Here we can already see that the capacity has to be chosen carefully. With this bound, we calculate the waiting time, which is the number of trials needed until a ball is allocated, plus at most c additional rounds until it is deleted. Note the following special case in our scenario. For infinite capacity, no ball is ever rejected, and since we do not use the power of two choices, we expect this to perform poorly. So to summarize our results, we show that there exists a finite sweet spot for the capacity, which depends on the arrival rate lambda. There are results from 2016 which, with infinite capacity to compare against. When balls arrive in batches of size lambda n and choose the lesser loaded of two bins in parallel, the waiting time equals the number of balls in a bin when a ball arrives there. With a suitably chosen capacity, we can reduce the waiting time both for constant lambda as well as for values approaching 1. Now let's have a look at the analysis. Consider the case where the capacity is 1. Since we delete one ball from each non-empty bin, all bins are empty at the end of each round. Therefore, we can fully describe the state of a system at the end of a round by the number of unallocated balls. This greatly reduces the complexity of the analysis. The underlying idea of our proof is as follows. Intuitively, the system should settle around an equilibrium where we create as many balls per round as we delete. For capacity 1, this can be easily calculated. Now assume that the current number of balls exceeds this value by 2n then we likely delete more than lambda n balls in the next round. This bias is sufficient to prove the following. If at some time t2 we have at least two m star balls, then there must be a time t1 
when we were at m star balls for the last time. We show that an increase of m star balls is unlikely regardless of the number of rounds in between. And having less balls than expected is of course only to our advantage, so we don't need a lower amount. For higher capacity, our goal is still to find a good bound for the probability of a bin to be empty at the end of a round. But now we have to deal with a lot of dependencies and non-empty bins at the end of a round. A big part of our paper is dedicated to define and analyze a process that can be proven to give an upper bound on the load of the system, but still performs reasonably well without sacrificing the advantage of a higher capacity. For the waiting time, we again consider capacity 1 first. If bins prefer older balls, no younger ball gets in the way of older balls. And since we know with high probability that in any given round t, there are no more than two m star balls, the problem can be reformulated as how long until two m star balls are gone. Each round, old balls compete for the bins and we, when several balls choose the same bin, all but one have to retry next round. This boils down to analyzing the probabilities of collisions and has been done before. For C greater than 1, there is at least one empty slot per bin, so the number of collisions is an upper bound on the number of remaining balls, so the results hold for this case as well. The waiting time of the balls is then mainly given by the time until it is allocated, and after that it takes at most C rounds until the ball is deleted. We also compare our theoretical results to simulations. Except for the log log n term, our bound on the waiting time is independent of n. Therefore, we have simulated the system for a fixed n, but different values of c and lambda. As expected, our bounds, the dashed lines, are rather pessimistic since we did not optimize the constants. However, the simulations indicate that our bounds for the number of balls in the system are tight up to a constant factor, and for small values of c, we see that the number of balls is more or less anti-proportional to the capacity. And here we see the average waiting time in the simulation as triangles and the maximum waiting time as circles. Since balls can wait up to c rounds after allocation, for a fixed lambda the waiting time decreases up to a certain value of c, but then increases again. Our results capture this phenomenon. So we see that this is not merely an artifact of our analysis, but there actually exists a finite, non-trivial, optimal capacity C, depending on lambda.